Reaching out to people in the music industry is an important part of developing your career. Whether you're just starting out or whether you're more established, it's an important part of growing your business, of growing your network, or as I like to call it, growing your community. Whether you're an artist reaching out to management companies or record labels, or a composer and producer reaching out to publishers, production music companies, cold emailing is part and parcel of this career development. However, there is a way to do it. And there's one thing that I see on a daily basis in the unsolicited emails I receive, which ensures that that email gets deleted without me even reading it. In this video, I'm gonna tell you what that one thing is, but I'm also gonna give you a four step plan for improving your emails and hopefully guaranteeing that they at least get read rather than deleted. Hi there, my name's Jim Huswick from LARP Music. I'm a music composer and producer, and I write for TV and film, primarily in the form of production music, but I also produce artists and have a record label. When I started out in this business, I vowed that I would never be the guy that didn't reply to emails, because I hate it when people don't reply to my emails. However, I sadly have become that guy. So if you have emailed me and I never replied, I'm sorry, I didn't want to be that guy, but needs must. I would say about 50% of the emails that I receive on a daily basis commit the same faux pas, which means that I hit the delete key instantly without even reading the email. And it looks something like this. Hi, blah, 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 blah. If you're sending an email and you're not prepared to take the time to work out who you're sending the email to and who you're addressing it to, I'm not prepared to take the time to read it. Why? Because the chances are it's not particularly well thought out and it's also probably part of a mass email out. So you've copied and pasted the same text into 100 different emails and sent it out in the hope of getting a response. It doesn't work like that. Which brings me on to my four point plan of writing emails which stand a chance of getting read. <laughs> Step number one, research who you're emailing. Don't think that the scattergun approach works. Mass email outs do not work. Take the time to research who you are emailing and ensure that they are the relevant person to be sending an email to. I quite often receive emails from people sending me their music saying, can you get this placed in TV and film? I'm not a music supervisor, I'm a composer. I want someone else to put my music to film and TV. So those people haven't taken the time to actually work out what I do and whether I'm a relevant contact for them. Again, I'm probably not gonna reply because you've either not done your research or you've not really understood what it is that I do. Take the time to do a bit of research and work out who you're sending it to. And don't send it to a sir or madam. Pick a specific person within an organization and address the email to them and do a bit of research to prove that you know that who you're speaking to is the relevant person. Step number two, reference their work. So you've taken a bit of time, you've worked out who you're emailing, you've done a bit of research into them, you know what they do, you know they're relevant. If you can talk about work and reference work of theirs that you've seen or that you've enjoyed, you go some way to not only proving that you've done your research, but you endear yourself to them. Because ultimately everybody likes to have a bit of smoke blown up their ass from time to time. A caveat to that is if you find yourself having to lie about someone's work and say that you really enjoy it when you don't, they're probably not the best person to be emailing. So don't do that because even via email, you can kind of sniff out when someone's been inauthentic. Step number three, get creative. So let's say that I receive 10 unsolicited emails in a day. Nine of them are very standard formulaic emails and one of them has the subject line, let's eat grandma. Which one am I more likely to read? Exactly, the one with the quirky subject line. Now again, it's no guarantee that I'm gonna read it, but it certainly makes it stand out from all the others, and this is what you're doing. You're kind of interrupting someone's day and hoping that they will take the time to read your email, so you have to get their attention, and being a little bit creative and thinking outside the box is a good way to do that. Again, it doesn't guarantee it's gonna get read, but hopefully it means that your email gets picked over the other nine. Step number four, curate. By curate, I'm talking about carefully considering what you send them. So the chances are you're gonna be sending them examples of your work, links to SoundCloud or Spotify. But what you need to do is you need to carefully curate what you send them. Don't just send them to a website and expect them to browse around and find the gold. Send them relevant examples of your work. So if you're an artist reaching out to a record label, you wanna be sending them a release on Spotify. If you're a 
producer, composer, and you're contacting a production music library, you need to be sending them something that you composed to work for TV and film. Now I would suggest sending two links. The first link piques my interest and go, oh, that's good. The second link is where if I want to listen to a little bit more, I've got something else to go on. Hopefully within listening to two pieces of music, I will be convinced of your talent and go, I must talk to this person immediately. But you also don't want to send people too much material. People generally don't want to see links to 20 different pieces of music. You need to carefully choose the ones that you send. <laughs> So there you go, that is my four point plan for contacting, reaching out and cold emailing people within the music industry. So think first, research, find out who you're addressing it to and make sure you address it to a specific person. Second of all, reference their work, show that you've done your research and blow a bit of smoke up their ass. Three, get creative. Try and do something with your email which makes it stand out from all of the other emails that people might be receiving on a daily basis. That starts with the subject line, but also you can get creative with the copy that you send in the body of the email. And four is curate, curate, curate. Make sure you are sending the best possible examples of your work which are relevant to them and whatever part of the industry that they move in. So it's worth pointing out at this stage that if you are cold emailing someone, you are essentially relying on the fact that your email lands in their inbox at exactly the moment that they are looking for someone just like you. And obviously those chances are pretty slim. And certainly by following these four steps, there's no guarantee that people will reply to your emails. However, if each of those steps improves your chances by 5%, four steps improving your chances by 5% is a 20% increase in the likelihood that hopefully your email gets read and that hopefully you get a response. So it's also worth pointing out that if you don't get a response first time, it's always worth following up. I'm pretty bad at this. I generally sort of think if I send out an email and no one replies that they're not interested, but it's always important to follow up. And I would say follow up no more than three times because you don't want to become a pest, but you also do want to give them a chance to reply if they happen to have missed your email. I had an example last year whereby I emailed a music agency in London and I never heard from them. When I followed up, the guy came back very apologetic saying, oh God, I'm so sorry. Your email got lost in a deluge of other emails. Um, but yes, we'd love for you to come in and talk about how we can work together. I'd say three is probably the optimum. If you don't hear back after three, trying to move on. Um, and I'd also suggest leaving a period of about a week in between emails because it can take people a long time to get around to reading those emails and you don't want to be a pest. If after three times they've not got in touch, it's time to leave it, or maybe then at least wait another month and you could try your luck one fourth time. But as a rule, three times and you're out. So there you go, there's my four point plan. Hopefully that will be useful to you uh, in terms of getting better results when you're cold emailing people, which again, it is a really important part of growing your career and your community. So try it out and let me know how you get on in the comments section below. Also, if you do have any questions or any issues that you'd like to raise, pop them in the comments section below and I will reply. If this has been useful, then please hit the thumbs up icon. It goes some way to telling YouTube that this video is worth watching and makes me feel good about myself. Um, but as well, I am releasing regular videos, so do hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to make sure you're the first to find out. Thanks for watching and keep making music. So this is a this is an example of an email that I received earlier today. This is a classic example. Subject, a demo track. Message body. Not even a hi, I don't even get a hi. Here's a link to a demo track I did recently. Dropbox links. They have signed it, but I'm not going to say who it is. But it's like, no, sorry. And imagine you get 20 of those a day. It's like, ah. Oh.